if you are into retro computing, you most definitely ran into this issue at least once. And that is that on your old PC, the hard drive either is missing or it's dead or it's like this one here on its way out. This doesn't sound very healthy anymore and it uh, probably will die very soon. So you are confronted with the question, should you get a, another IDE hard disk which could just die again or you bring this PC into the modern era and make it solid state. Now you're not gonna buy a solid state drive of course, <laughs> you will make your own and for that you will need an adapter. Now guys, from experience uh, I cannot say <laughs> which adapter works with which machine. And if you say I'm nuts, uh, let me explain what I mean. For example, here I have uh, an IBM ThinkPad 390 from late 90s with their proprietary IDE to their whatever that is. Uh, I think it's SCSI or something, but maybe not, I don't know, adapter. Now the problem is when you buy, for example, such an adapter, which is conveniently shaped uh, like a hard disk and everything, you end up having one, one too much pin. Like, uh, see there where I tried to push it in? No, um, it bent that pin because it's missing that one pin. There is like a, not a cutout for that pin. So, um, these adapters, they do not work. Also, yes, uh, me being me, I tried modifying it, I bent that pin away and tried to boot it, but no, no chance, not getting recognized by the machine. On this particular machine, and also another 90s IBM ThinkPad I have, I made also a video about installing uh, Windows on an SD card there, this adapter worked. This is a, a very different looking adapter. This is an SD to IDE for, uh, 44 pin IDE adapter with the missing pin. So this one works and it is ready to install Windows. Now you might ask, uh, why should I, you know, why should I do this? Why not get a hard drive makes life easier? Well, um, I can tell you a couple of benefits. First of all, if you have a solid state medium, be it a compact flash card or SD card, the machine is first of all going to be way more reliable because Hard disks, as I said, they can die any minute at this, you know, age that they are now. With this, if it dies, you can just swap it out with another one and you're good to go. Second, um, I've got here, for example, an SD to compact flash adapter, which goes in here because I don't own any uh, compact flash cards. Now, the good thing about that is I can just use a regular SD card such as uh, this here and when I want to transfer files for example for drivers or programs and I don't want to deal with like Windows 98 or 95's capabilities to hook up to modern networks which uh, they very rarely hook up to uh, connect to modern servers and stuff I can just put the file on here plug this into my modern PC put the file on here put it back in the machine and there it is. So a very simple way to transfer files, of course, uh, it's not the most elegant way. You have to put out the adapter, fish out the SD card and you know, but still, um, this is a way you can do it. I just quickly want to show you that you kind of have to get a little creative with, for example, this ThinkPad here, because uh, you will see that, well, IBM didn't really intent to make it convenient to plug in a small SD to ID adapter. Much cooler would it have been if this one worked, which is conveniently shaped like a hard drive. So as you see, it's the same size. You will have no troubles plugging it in and putting it back out. However, in this case, the one that works, and that's the funny thing, you know, the one that works is so little, like, you can see it's so far in there trying to get a good view as you see the LED is a uh, light lighting up here and uh, you have to kind of get creative I use like pliers to position it and a screwdriver to push it down and you might say oh this is this is not good at all because it's flimsy it could get unplugged yes I know I know guys 
But if you have a different solution, like maybe you are one of these cool fancy designers which can make a 3D printed like custom bracket which holds it, you know, you know just uh, let your creativity flow. But in my case, it, this has to do. And in fact, I've done it the same getaway on my other ThinkPad. And it's, you know, it never came loose. And if it does, I just take this screwdriver and jam it back in. So, you know, this channel never was about doing something completely right. It's just, a, you know, mostly about getting stuff working. But, yeah, I'm digressing a bit. Now, when you're done with this, um, you hopefully see a screen like this. This is Windows 98 setup. And it is ready to install because if it didn't say that, it might say um, the computer doesn't have any hard disks, which is bad because then either your adapter doesn't work, the computer doesn't like the adapter, which is more likely, or your SD card is wrongly formatted. So before I just recommend going into Windows, format it as NTFS and nothing bad can happen. If it still says that and you get the right adapter, then maybe it is about the SD card. So guys, if you are like into retro computing, you've also done this before. Do you know if uh, some of these old, doesn't have to be ThinkPads, like general old computers, do they have issues with like modern SD cards? I don't know guys. Um, but uh, I'm told that sometimes they don't like modern SD cards or so. In my case here, I've got an old Sony 4 gigabyte, so it's 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 not really a problem. But I don't know, for example, if this one would work. So please, guys, uh, tell me if you know why and if it also happened to you. So as you see, uh, we can continue here our setup. I'll just quickly uh, format this again. And as you see, it recognized it. It says, sorry for the German, I've got here my original Windows 98 disk. Yeah, check that out. Um, it says the disk is bigger than 512 megabytes. Should it, should the uh, support be activated like for bigger drives? And it most definitely should. So, uh, yeah, it says, uh, please put in the floppy again, but it's it's from CD. So we just have to boot from CD again. So that, that's a good sign, guys. Um, from there on, the install should be just smooth. Just as if it was a normal hard disk. It might be faster than you're used to because, yes, SD cards, they don't have the greatest read and write speeds, but they sometimes have better read and write speeds than really old and maybe clapped out hard disks that are half, you know, dead. And uh, if... Um, if this is, for example, here, uh, well, hard disk is not found, that, that's that's a weird error there, because it, it most definitely recognized it before. Um, but uh, in my case here, we get a real-time clock error. That is because the, S, uh, the CMOS battery in this is dead, and I might replace it in the future. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'll do it. But that is not stopping us from, from, from booting this up into Windows 98. So let's boot from CD-ROM again. And cross fingers that we don't get a blue screen or, or any weird other errors. We just hope that the old IBM ThinkPad can learn a little new trick with the SD card. So yes guys, this is something I wanted to see. Formatting drive C. And it's formatting pretty quick. Which is good. No single like uh, sound because it's solid state. Yes. So I always find it so cool to see old tech like this work with modern tech. That that's something I really like, and it makes it makes it pretty unique as well. So yeah. Now that I'm happy that it's formatted, we can start our installation of Windows 98 second edition which is this particular operating system and guys if you're worried uh, oh does my Windows this and that work I can guarantee you everything until XP can be installed on an SD card yes a friend of mine and me we spent like a whole two days 
installing Windows XP on an SD card. It was like a front embedded system and it wasn't the best idea, it was terribly slow, but it worked. So I've installed Windows 2000, 98, even 95 can be installed on an SD card. So just go ahead, uh, MS-DOS, you know, no nothing that doesn't work. It's just a regular hard drive, you have to think about that. If it, if the computer recognizes it, it will just be recognized as a normal hard disk. About the size of the SD card, uh, you can just put in any SD card you want. However, I don't know, for example, if it really would work with these gigantic, like 128 gig, 250, even like 512 gigabyte SD cards. I, I don't really know, guys. Uh, maybe like the OS has got trouble reading it or, or whatever, but because it's just so big or, or it can't use all the space, that's what probably would happen, in my opinion, but... Just let me know if you could theoretically like go all nuts and put a half a terabyte SD card in here and it install Windows 98 on it. <laughs> Does Windows 98 even recognize such large disks? I don't know. Now, uh, I find it so cool, it's just me, uh, that the SD adapter is working beautifully with the hard drive LED. Like, as if it... Uh, as if it was a normal hard disk, so you will not see a difference other than you will not hear anything and it might even perform a little better. So yeah, we'll let it install and uh, we'll be back when everything is installed. So and there we are, we have completed our Windows 98 installation. As you see, it quite obviously needs a graphics driver, but uh, that's not what we're gonna cover in today's video. I just want to show you that everything is working. We got here our Pentium 2 recognized. Let's go to hard drive controllers. And, uh, oh, it doesn't even show up like to SD or something. It just says IDE controller and then and, and second IDE controller. That's really all it does. Oh, well, um, I'm glad though that it installed the USB driver so I can just plug in my USB drive so I don't have to kind of do it other, any other way to get drivers on here. Um, let's just uh, quick, quickly look at the C drive here. And here we have it, 3.51 gigabytes. Only 240 max used, so a little room to play. And yeah, so that is our SD card. I'm very happy that it worked that well. Now all that needs to be done is install some drivers and then we have our retro Windows 98 machine. So thanks for watching and tell me what you think of installing an OS on an SD card. And don't you please ask me about any games or anything because I don't care for games. So yeah, because a lot of people, you know, they want to play old games on their retro systems, which is fine. But yeah, I like to do other stuff with them. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you later.